Sustainable investing is on the path to becoming mainstream as more regulations and standards are introduced to assess the environment, social and governance or ESG footprint of firms. Globally, over 3 trillion US dollars in assets under management are parked in ESG focused funds as of the first half of 2023. ESG funds are definitely coming back strong. We saw in the market there are about 250 new ESG funds being launched. Um, and over half of these funds are domiciled in Europe, but APAC markets are catching up quite quickly. Funds based on ESG criteria and societal impact have been the outperformers so far this year, generating 6.9% in median returns versus 3.8% for traditional funds. The gains are largely driven by big-name technology stocks, which have pushed best-performing ESG funds to over 40% returns. ESG funds tend to be overweight in technology, healthcare, industrials, but underweight uh, energy, uh, which uh, did very well last year. Uh, so that's, this is really what contributed to the underperformance of these funds last year. This year, we saw a complete reversal of fortune. Cumulatively, global sustainable funds have seen net positive inflow this year. But ASEAN sustainability funds, domiciled in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand, saw outflows of over 170 million US dollars in the first half of 2023, reversing from inflows of 100 million US dollars in the same period a year ago. In ASEAN itself, um, the, the development of ESG hasn't been that strong. Let's say investors reallocating away from ESG funds. So they, they might have um, thought that in, in this current environment, certain spaces in, in the investment space could be interesting from a risk reward perspective for them to allocate their money into. In a way, capital outflow could be a reflection of how investors have become more selective in their scrutiny of funds. So certain funds, if you and invest into companies that are, you know, more loss making, um, less um, cash flow positive in the near term, but more longer, longer dated um, cash flows. These type of funds are likely um, going to see much more impact from the um, rising interest rate in environment. From an ESG funds perspective, certain funds they do not invest in oil and gas related type of companies. So if we start to see that kind of very strong um, oil pricing environment, um, such funds are more than likely to underperform. Stock holdings in ESG funds are screened on risk areas such as climate change, biodiversity, human capital, exposure to bribery and corruption, and if they are driving positive impact to the environment and society. Put your money where your, your value sits. One could decide to maybe um, allocate capital to ESG tilt funds to diversify their portfolio. Um, apart from um, ESG funds, there are also private options um, to um, support projects that are more you know, impact focused. We're very excited about the opportunities with environmental decarbonization. Because I think those are things that are a little bit more tangible right now. China has become a leader in terms of electric vehicles. Chinese companies that are within decarbonization, within this movement, they are world class, actually leading in terms of solar, you know, leading in terms of battery components. Uh, it's definitely better to invest in a fund that's diversified in terms of sectors and countries. Companies with high ESG scores, those tend to have a little bit of a growth tilt, but energy transition funds may have more of a value tilt. So by combining the two, you are making it more well-rounded. And of course, in every portfolio, you want to consider fixed income as well. Despite the growing interest in sustainable investing, there are red flags that investors need to watch out for. ESG funds are primarily rebranded traditional funds. Uh, since 2020 alone, over a trillion dollars of funds have been rebranded. Most of the asset managers and portfolio managers who are configuring ESG funds are they're they're paid based on their performance versus traditional benchmarks and as a result 
their funds don't stray very far from traditional non-ESG funds. While ESG funds tend to outperform traditional funds, investors should also temper their expectations. There have been thousands of studies that have looked at the correlation between the ratings of a company for ESG and the performance of that equity. There's no causal relationship that's been demonstrated. For example, it could be that both ESG and alpha are a function of good management. So that it's management that actually is the driver of the outperformance, not ESG. And so I don't think it's right to expect that high ESG companies over time will deliver outsized returns. I think it's more important to focus on the long term and consider whether you believe that ESG would actually help companies and funds outperform in the future. As the sustainability theme attracts younger investors and more industry regulations are put in place, experts see demand picking up. We see a lot of uh, re regulation uh, forcing companies to disclose more uh, ESG, uh, ESG data. This is going to bring more clarity, more transparency to the space, and uh, this is uh, in turn going to uh, result in, in higher demand. That aside, companies like those in the energy space will be in a process of transition and investors will do well to take advantage of upswings in various market cycles. We still need oil, we still need metals, we still need mining, we still need agriculture. We think investors should do. They need to sort of have a core allocation to an environmental fund and a traditional natural resources fund. Whether it's passive or active, you blend those two together, I think it's a wonderful addition to a client's portfolio.